Hi, my name is Timothy Chu from Carnegie Mellon University, and I am presenting on algorithms and hardness for linear algebra on geometric graphs. Now, my co-authors are Joshua Allman, Aaron Schild, and Zhao Song from Harvard, the University of Washington, and in the case of Zhao, Columbia, Princeton, and the Institute of Advanced Studies. There are three questions I want to keep in mind during the course of this talk. A, what problem are we solving? B, why do we want to solve it? And C, what are some notable results in our work? So what problem are we solving? Let K be a function that takes in two points in d-dimensional Euclidean space and outputs a real number, which is non-negative. The K-graph of, uh, of a set of endpoints is a complete graph of n nodes and the edge weight between node i and j is k applied to the two endpoints. The question is, for what k does a k-graph have fast algorithms? And we should note that there are n squared edges in the graph, but the input size is nd. So if d is a little o of n, we can hope for algorithms that run in subquadratic time. Indeed, if d is roughly log n, we can hope for algorithms that run in almost linear time. Now, before we get to the exact problem that we're going to be solving, let's do a couple of examples of k and k graphs. So in our talk, we restrict our attention to functions k, where k applied to x and y is equal to a function of the Euclidean distance between x and y. This is an important point in our talk. As an example, let k be the Euclidean distance between x and y. Then the k-graph of endpoints is a complete graph of n vertices whose edge lengths are the Euclidean distance between points. Here, we've shown an example for four points, and the edge lengths in the graph are exactly the edge lengths you see on the slide. Now, as another example, we can let k equal the inverse Euclidean distance squared. Then the k-graph of endpoints is a complete graph of n vertices whose edge lengths are the inverse squared Euclidean distance between points. Now, we'll address what problem we're solving, and we will actually be tackling three different kinds of linear algebra algorithms on these k-graphs. So for what k and d does a k-graph of endpoints in d dimensions have fast algorithms approximating a, the matrix vector multiplication problem, that is multiplying the k-graph's adjacency or Laplacian matrix by any n-dimensional vector, high accuracy, b, the spectral sparsifier problem, finding a 1 plus epsilon spectral sparsifier to the k-graph. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with spectral sparsifiers, just know that these are a graph with roughly n log n edges that have properties that closely approximate that of the original k-graph. This is a central object in the study of spectral graph theory. Finally, we'll tackle the Laplacian system solver problem. Here, we want to approximate x with high accuracy, such that l times x equals b for a given b. And l is a Laplacian graph of the k-graph. We should know that in all these problems, the straightforward running time of these problems is roughly n squared, because all of these problems are known to be solvable in almost, or nearly linear time with respect to the number of edges. However, in the case where d is, say, theta of log n, our desired runtime is almost linear because the input size is actually much smaller than quadratic. So our question is, for these three problems, for which k and which d can we solve these problems quickly? And for which k and which d are these problems necessarily hard? Now, before we get to our techniques, we're going to address the question of why we're trying to solve these problems. Why do we want to address these three linear algebra problems on geometric graphs? Well, we know that the matrix vector multiplication problem appears in physics. For example, let's say you want to calculate the gravitational force of a system of planets on each planet. How can you do this quickly? And it turns out that <clears throat> you can solve this using a matrix vector product. That's an exercise left for the reader if you're so interested. And it turns out another very famous algorithm called the fast multiple method was designed to solve this algorithm quickly for a certain k and low dimension. So low dimension meaning roughly constant dimension. One of the motivations for our 
work is asking, can you extend the fast multiple method to different dimension and different K? And again, that algorithm is related to computing a major matrix vector multiplication problem. Quickly. Our motivation for considering spectral sparsifiers are that they're a central object in spectral graph theory. In particular, if you have a graph that you can compute a spectral sparsifier of quickly, you can also compute do spectral clustering, max flow, sparsest cut, and min cut, among many other problems quickly. Therefore, if you can find a spectral sparsifier of a geometric graph in almost linear time, you can solve any of these problems in almost linear time on that graph as well. So spectral sparsifiers and fast spectral sparsification is a very powerful tool. Finally, for Laplacian system solvers on geometric graphs, there are applications to semi-supervised learning, which is a common task in machine learning. Now, part two of our motivation is actually just a more theoretical reason we're interested in these problems. All of the problems we're tackling are fundamental linear algebra questions with decades of study behind them. Geometric graphs, on the other hand, are a very common object in computer science. They appear in fields ranging from computational geometry, machine learning, image recognition, physical simulations, and more. It seems natural, therefore, to find fast algorithms or hardness results for each of these fundamental linear algebra questions on these commonly used geometric graphs. And that's our theoretical motivation, why we're just intrinsically interested in this question, independent of all the concrete applications that I mentioned on the previous slide. Now, we've addressed what our problem is, why we want to solve it, and now we're on to what are some notable results in our work. In this paper, we aim to classify the K and D for which we can find almost linear running times for the three problems we have. We also classify the K and D, or we attempt to, for which you cannot achieve a running time much better than quadratic, assuming some complexity hypotheses. And we'll give two of our many results on this line, and in keeping with the title of our presentation, which is about algorithms and hardness, we'll have one algorithm result for spectral sparsifiers, and a hardness result for matrix vector multiplication and Laplacian solve. So our results are that for a wide variety of kernels k uh, that are a function of Euclidean distance, you can find a spectral sparsifier in high dimension, aka theta log n dimension, in almost linear time. And here, the only assumption of f is it does not grow or decay super polynomial. So one example of a k that does have a fast spectral sparsifier on it is the function k being the Euclidean distance squared or the inverse Euclidean distance squared or any positive polynomial of the Euclidean distance. Positive polynomial being positive coefficients. So for all those functions k, you can find a fast, almost linear time algorithm to get a spectral sparsifier even in the high dimensional setting, the log n dimensional setting. And this in turn means you can solve max flow, sparsest cut, min cut, spectral clustering, and a wide variety of problems uh, very, very quickly on geometric graphs. Now we'll turn our attention to matrix vector multiplication and solving Laplacian systems, also in the high dimensional setting. So it turns out that for a wide variety of k, it's actually hard to do these problems with high accuracy, assuming something called the strong exponential time hypothesis. In particular, the criterion is if your function k is a function of Euclidean distance, but it is not tightly approximated by a polynomial of the Euclidean distance, then your um, two problems must take close to quadratic time. Now, if k is a polynomial, you can do these tasks quickly. And as an example of functions that are not tightly approximated by any polynomial, the inverse Euclidean distance squared is not tightly approximated by any polynomial, nor is the exponential of the negative Euclidean distance. And here, the matrix vector multiplication problem contrasts with the spectral sparsifier problem. When k is the inverse Euclidean distance squared, and you're in high dimensions, you can find a spectral sparsifier quickly, but doing matrix vector multiplication, the high accuracy, 
is hard. Now for the rest of this talk, we'll be going over the techniques, a very rough outline of the techniques we use to get each of these two results. So we're briefly going to outline how we do spectral sparsifiers for any function k that does not grow or decay super polynomially. In particular, this handles all rational functions of f uh, with positive coefficients. First, we're going to use Johnson Linden's stress to project our initial point set, which exists in high dimensions, and we're going to project it to square root log n dimensions. Why we choose this will be clear in a moment. This incurs a square root log n distortion. And you may not have seen John and Linton Strauss, aka random projections, used to project to a dimension less than log n, but you can do it if you're willing to incur a higher distortion than you normally are used to. So John's and Linden Strauss projecting to lower dimensions with our first step. Second step, we're going to use a well-separated parity composition. What is this? This takes a set of Euclidean points and it takes the edges and breaks them into disjoint cliques. And these cliques have the property that every edge uh, in these cliques, well, sorry, breaks it into disjoint bi cliques. And it has the property that every edge in these bi cliques that sort of crosses the gap in the bi clique is roughly the same length. So the well separated parity composition is a famous technique in computational geometry, and it takes roughly n times 2 to the d time to run. But since we projected our points to square root log n dimension, we can actually run this step in almost linear time. Once again, for those of you who didn't quite understand the whole thing, the well-separated parity composition takes points in Euclidean space, takes all the edges between points in Euclidean space, and breaks it into bi cliques, where the edges going across each end of the bi clique are all roughly the same length. Finally, we sparsify each bi clique using a small modification of the uniform sampling technique of Spielman and Tang and of Codis and Miller and Peng in 2010. For those of you not familiar with uniform sampling, I just would recommend uh, reading the Spielman and Tang 2008 paper. But the basic idea is for each bi clique, you're just gonna sample each edge independently at random. And if you do this enough times, you're gonna get a fairly sparse sparsifier of each bi clique. When I say bi clique, I mean, um, a complete bipartite graph. Now we've sparsified each bi clique, and the well separated parity composition me, uh, tells us that we have a bunch of bi cliques whose union is the complete graph. So the union of these sparsifiers will actually be a sparsifier of our complete k graph. And it turns out that these steps allow us to sparsify a quadratically sized graph, the k graph, in almost linear time when k satisfies the assumptions we've listed. I didn't go through the full details, this is just the outline. This is just something that will help you read the section of our paper. Now, how do we do the matrix vector multiplication problem? In particular, how do we show this is hard in high dimension for a wide variety of functions k? Well, we show for any k that is a function of Euclidean distance, that if the function is not tightly approximable to have polynomial, it will take almost quadratic time to solve this question in high dimension. Why? Well, it turns out that if you could solve matrix vector multiplication, you could also solve the approximate Hamming nearest neighbor problem. Don't worry too much about what that is for now. And it's known that if you assume the strong exponential time hypothesis, the approximate Hamming nearest neighbor problem must take something very close to quadratic time. Therefore, assuming this hypothesis, Seth, matrix vector multiplication must also take close to quadratic time. And our core result is the reduction from matrix vector multiplication to the approximate Hamming nearest neighbor problem in the case where K is not tightly approximable to apply polynomial. Now it should be clear, when I say not tightly approximable by a polynomial, there's actually a fairly technical definition, which is in our paper. But for now, just assume that for any function that is not a polynomial, matrix vector multiplication is hard. Now, I'm going to briefly outline why the approximate Hamming nearest neighbor should have anything to do with a matrix vector multiplication problem. And for this, I'm just going to do it for an example k that is not closely approximable by a polynomial. And I'm actually going to claim that what we're going to present is the core idea 
we use to do this for any k not closely approximable by a polynomial. Again, we're just showing one example k, and we're showing why matrix vector multiplication is hard in this setting. Then we are claiming, without proof, that other functions that are non-polynomials can be reduced to this particular case. So our example is a function uh, where k applied to two points is equal to the Euclidean distance of those two points raised to the negative log n power. And here, we're allowing k to have a dependency on n. Recall that n is the number of points. If you could approximate matrix vector multiplication quickly, you could also compute the following quickly, which is uh, the equation you see on the slide. Here, the one in all bold is the all ones vector, and A is the adjacency matrix of K, of the K graph. It turns out that this product is equal to the sum of all pairs of the Euclidean distance raised to the negative log n power. Now this value, because negative log n is huge, is actually dominated by the pair x, y, where x and y, x minus y is minimized. So if you could do this matrix vector multiplication with high accuracy quickly, it would allow you to efficiently approximate the nearest neighbors in a set of n points, uh, which in turn, you know, you could do approximate Hamming nearest neighbors from this. Now, Seth implies this must take close to quadratic time. And therefore, uh, if Seth is true, matrix vector multiplication for this particular uh, function k must also take close to quadratic time. Now, I did gloss a couple of details under the table. Um, there are details you need to fill in here, so don't be worried if you don't fully understand this proof. But this is the rough outline for why matrix vector multiplication takes close to quadratic time, or must take close to quadratic time, for this particular value of k, particular function. And we claim that for other non-polynomial functions, f or k, their Taylor series expansion has infinitely many terms. In particular, it has terms that look like x raised to the high power, where this power is bigger than log n. And for those functions, we can actually reduce it to this case. It's not trivial at all how to do this. And this contains, this is what a lot of our work in our paper is dedicated towards. Again, things I didn't quite mention is what it formally means to be closely approximable by a polynomial. There's a technical definition of this, but for now, just assume only polynomials have this uh, property. And the second thing I didn't show yet is how to reduce other functions to this example that we've worked at in more detail. I also didn't fully go over all the details in this example, but this is the rough outline for how we show matrix vector multiplication is hard for a large class of K in high dimensions. Now our full paper, besides for having extra details on these two notable results, our full paper addresses algorithms and hardness for our three problems of interest for a wide range of K, for both the high dimensional setting and the low dimensional setting. And for a more complete classification of the K and D, for which our three problems are either hard or have fast algorithms, you can refer to our full paper, in particular, our introduction. Thank you very much. <laughs>